So in this part, what we're going to be doing is returning our title, our keywords, and our description if we were able to get them from um, our function. So the way we do that is we just say return, and we're going to return some JSON. So we're going to return JSON strings. So we're going to use the two JSON opening brackets. The first thing we're going to return is called title, and it's going to be equal to our title, obviously. So we're going to say title, and we actually want to surround that in quotes because um, if we were just if we weren't to do that, our JSON wouldn't be valid. So we're going to uh, put a comma there. Our next one is descriptions. We'll just say description in quotes again. The colon goes outside the quotes, and then so the way it works is you have double quotes colon, double quotes again. Uh, and the other double quotes, we will put in our description, if we have one. Uh, and then in the final one, we will put in our keywords, if we have any. And for description, we actually want to make sure there's no new lines in it, because they can mess about with the JSON. So what we'll say is, str replace and we'll just remove the new lines by replacing them with nothing in the description string so uh, that should be it so let's just run this again and as you can see for Google and YouTube we got um, titles for the pages that didn't exist we didn't get anything because the pages didn't exist so what we're going to do is we're just going to append a new line on there to make it easier to read and we'll run it again and you can see we have Google, then we have a blank one, then we have YouTube, then we have a blank one and that matches up with our links. You can see we have Google, a link that doesn't exist, YouTube, another link, another link, another link and none of the other links actually exist. But what we're not doing is we're not following the links that are collected by these pages. So what we need to do to get the corner to go on indefinitely is just create a simple for each loop. So down here for each, uh, already crawled as site, which essentially just means refer to every item and already crawled as site. And we'll just say follow links site and we'll just pass it site, which is just one of the links in our array. So as you can see here, um, each one of these links will be referred to as site and our crawler will go through all of these links and it will append them to our crawl array. So if I just run this now, what you'll see is we get the original pages. This is the first page that's been crawled. Now we're on Google Images. This was a link that wasn't actually in our original set of links. You can see we have Google Maps, Google Play, Google News. Uh, we have Google Books, Google Shopping, and you can see it's it's just doing it on its own now. It's finding links on pages that we didn't tell it about. That's exactly what we want from our crawler. You can see it's on Google Business now. It's on uh, Google's privacy policy. And eventually it'll actually leave Google altogether. Um, and it'll start going to other websites. So what we're getting here is a slight bug, and that's what we're going to fix in a minute. You can see it's just going to Google, sign in, Google, Google, sign in over and over and over again. It's just going to loop like this forever. That's because the way our crawler works is it creates a list of links it'll, and it'll start following those links. But if the first link on the page is the link it's already on, it's just going to keep going back to that same link over and over and over and over again. So the way we fix that is we create another array, just call it like crawling or something, it doesn't really matter. And then in here, every time we add a link to already crawled, we add another link to crawling. And what we do here is we just change this from already crawled to the crawling array because that's when we're looping through. And then we'll be above that, we'll use the array shift function to remove the first link. So this means it's not going to keep going back and back and back to the first link over and over and over again. So we just say array shift to remove the first item off the array and we, we uh, move it from crawling. So let's just run this again and see what happens. So again we have the first page, you can see these are the links on it. Whoops, expects parameter 1 to be array. We need to make a global array, uh, as you can see we just didn't add it into the function. So that should be that problem fixed. Run it again. So once again, we're on the uh, first page now, 
and now we're on Google Accounts, we're on uh, different pages, and none of these pages were in our original set of links. So I'm going to let it go for a minute, and I'm just going to see how many links we can actually um, collect in this time. Okay, so that's probably enough. So you can see these here, blank ones or links, where it would have got a 404 error. In my original sort of prototype before this series, I had functions for checking the headers um, of requests to see if it was a 404 request, which would mean that, um, that the, f the page wasn't found and then therefore we wouldn't crawl it. But it slowed the crawler down significantly. And all having an empty item means is we get an empty item in our JSON. We could easily uh, correct that. Um, with whatever you know program we're going to use to upload the uh, JSON into our SQL database. Now we could easily fix that with whatever program we use to upload all of our data into a database. So before we finish, there's a couple of things I want to do. Uh, the first one is obviously I want to um, add the URL onto the end of the JSON. So we're just going to create another item, call it URL. And this one is going to be equal to, whoops, the link. So it's going to be URL. And now if we just run it really quick, we're going to see the URL of the page. As you can see, these are all the URLs here. And the last thing we want to do is we want to output our JS onto a file. So within uh, the finder on the computer, this is the page we're working with. This was our test page for the links uh, to check all the weird types of links we can get. And this here is pages.json. It's a blank page that we're going to uh, put our output of our crawler into. And what we're going to do is we're going to pipe the output of this command into that file and then we can actually open it up because I have a Chrome extension which means I can view the JSON and it'll look, uh, it'll be really easy to read. So let's just run that now. So we, the way we do that, it's really simple. We just say PHP, index.php to run the file and any, and if I just run it now, you can see here's all of our output. So any output that we get is going to go straight into that file. So if I just clear this again, I run this. Before I run it, I just want to put a greater than sign and I want to say pages.json. So that just means take the output that you would have sent to the terminal, which means we're not going to see anything, um, and send it to this file. So let's just do that. Let's hit enter. You'll see we get uh, nothing uh, in the terminal because it's all being sent to the file. It's not being sent to the terminal anymore. If I click pages.json, you can see it's actually filling up already. You can see I can scroll down and the lines are just getting longer and longer. If I look at the pages.json file, you can see it's 8 kilobytes now. Open it up again, it's still 8. If I leave it a bit longer, it'll get longer and longer and longer. You can see now it's 9 kilobytes and it'll just keep going and going and going. So we've probably got enough JSON now, so I'm just going to press Control c on the keyboard and that ends the script, that ends the program. Go to pages.json, it's 117 lines long and it is sort of hard to read like this. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to uh, Chrome and we're going to open pages.json in Chrome. So as you can see, this isn't really what we want to be looking at. It doesn't look formatted or anything at all. So the way we fix that is first thing I need to do is just run it through our web server. So I'll say localhost. So this is running through the local web server on the computer now, it's not being displayed, it's just a file. So I have an extension in Chrome which will format the JSON for us, but at the minute it's not 100% perfect JSON, so it's not actually able to parse it. So the way we fix that is I just need to come into our file and just manually change it. I just need to say, um, create an array, call it whatever I want, I don't actually need to give it a name. I create a JSON array using the square bracket and I close the JSON array with a square bracket. But uh, as you can see, if I go back here, we don't have commas separating all the items, so we need to put those in as well, or else we're not gonna have valid JSON. So uh, after each item, we just put a comma here. We'll just delete the contents of pages.json and we'll run it again. So we've just ran that again, and as you can see, now we have uh, the commas we need at the end, and now we have more correct JSON. It's not perfect yet, we just need to put in these into an array. And the last one, we need to delete the last comma and then close off the array. And if we load this now, again, we have almost perfect JSON. I see this title has a new line in it. But earlier on, I said new lines can mess up the JSON. So we just need to go in here, copy this, and just put it in title as well.
add keywords. And we once again run this. And if we take a look now, we just refresh, you can see nothing's changed, it still doesn't look good, it's not formatted. But now we have the commas in, we don't have any new lines, so this should work 100%. We just delete the last comma, put a square bracket in, we've got our JSON in an array and we have all of our items um, separated with these curly brackets and now hopefully we'll have formatting. So here we go, here is the formatting of all of our items. You can uh, minimize it or whatever you want. This is the raw output that we get, but this is the parsed version, which is well, way easier to read. And you can see it tells us the title of the websites if it's an actual website. You can see here there's no title, keywords, or description because this web page doesn't exist. And we might want to at some point sort of include something like that into our crawler so we don't have all of these um, web pages that don't exist. But as you can see here, there's the title, there's the description, there's no keywords on this page but there's the link to the actual page we just crawled. There's a title. Again, we could change things with the title. We could uh, trim it, which would remove all of these um, starting uh, and closing spaces. We have a probably couple of problems here with the character encoding. And again, we can look at that in a future video maybe. But uh, by and large, this is a web crawler. It works. It'll crawl any website you want. You can confine it to one website. You can make it crawl the entire internet if you want. It does anything you want. Uh, so that's it for this video. Don't forget to like, comment, favorite, and subscribe, and I'll see you next time.